Why, hello there, everybody. Uh, it's really good to be back. I went in this last week, uh, Tuesday, and I had to have some cancer removed off my head and off the side of my face. Yeah, I've been pretty sore in that. But I've really been wanting to get back and share some things with the Word of God with you. And so I'm here today, and I really do hope that you enjoy it. Uh, I, I hope that uh, it might help you with uh, life applications and stuff, too, as we read through this, you know, and I share some of these things. So uh, the, the basic purpose of this, it's going to be about our feelings and emotions is what it's going to be about, you know. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start right here. I, I want to read a scripture to you, and uh, then we'll move right on from there. Okay, so here we go. This is in Psalms 139, verse 15. It starts in verse 15. I think it goes through 17. But it says here that uh, my frame was not hidden from you when I was being formed in secret and intricately and curiously wrought, as if embroidered with various colors in the depths of the earth, a region of darkness and mystery. Your eyes saw my unformed substance, and then your book, all the days of my life were written before ever they took shape. When as yet there was none of them. Now how precious and weighty also are your thoughts to me, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. So here they're saying that, you know, before they even came into existence, that they were already written before ever they took shape. And that, that, that tells me a lot that, man, before we're ever even born, God knows as our life is written out, you know. So that's, that's really powerful to me, you know. So anyways, uh, we were, we're talking about emotions and feelings. So I, I wanted to define, find, I, I went to Google, I Googled it, you know, and these are the things that, that come up with uh, feelings and emotions, you know. Uh, this one is, uh, what is the simple definition of feeling, you know? And it says it's the capacity or ability to experience physical sensations such as pain, touch, temperature. That is mediated chiefly by end organs and sensory receptions in the skin. You know, like the doctor the other day when I went, ouch, and he goes, did you feel that? And I said, yeah, you know, I physically felt that. You know, but what's the difference between an emotion and a feeling? So an emotion is a physical experience or state of awareness that gives you information about the world. And a feeling is a consciousness, a conscious awareness of the emotion itself. So a feeling could be, you know, like, you know, how were they feeling today? Well, they were sad or whatever. It's, it's in the conscious, it's in the mind, you know, it's like spiritual, you know. So we kind of understand here what emotions and, and feelings are about, you know. So then uh, this, this pastor that I know, he talked about, this is a, supposed to be a scientific fact, you guys, okay? That when you take, uh, and this is looking through a microscope, okay? They're looking through the microscope, and their micro, it's down to 60 thousands of a second, if I remember right, okay? So in this microscope, there's the male sperm, and there's life in the male sperm. And then there's the female egg. And, of course, the female egg has life, too. So when they put it in this microscope and that, and when the two of them meet and conception is taken right there, within a 60 thousandths of a second, they say that the color of the eyes can be determined, whether it's going to be a male or a female, the color of the hair, you know, the DNA on this. And in 60 thousandths of a second, when the two lives meet and join and become one human, those things are identifiable under the 60 thousandths of a second microscope. So. To me, conception, man, that's, that's, that's heavy to me. I'm like, wow, that's crazy, you know. So anyways, uh, 
Jesus, you know, some of them, you know, we have feelings now, and 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 I think a lot of people. I mean, I've been, I'm very guilty of this myself, but I can let my feelings and my emotions get into me, and I'll do things that I would normally do. And I think a lot of us has experienced that. I think a lot of us are motivated by our feelings or our emotions, you know. Uh, road rage is one of them, you know. You get out here and somebody does something and they make you mad. You get all emotion. Your feelings are, wait, well, you're, you're just off the, off the log, you know. You're, you're just, you just want to go hurt them or something, you know. And, and you, you might do things that you want. So sometimes... You know, we let our emotions and our feelings, they upset us to the point where uh, it's not good. I, I heard one gentleman the other day that I was talking with, I thought it was very interesting. He said that uh, a lot of times when he reacts out of his emotions, it backfires in his face. You know, and I thought, no, that's true. You know, it can backfire. Yeah. So uh, we need to be careful with, with how our emotions and our feelings, you know, it's kind of like uh, uh our, our emotions are the sensors of our feelings or it's our, our feelings are the sensors of our emotions, you know. And when we start to get emotional, we need to be careful with it. Look, there's good emotions, there's bad, you know. Oh, the emotion, it was very happy, you know. Oh, there was joy in the room. Nothing wrong with those kind of, but there's other emotions too that can be very harmful. So when these kind of things come about, we, we should probably kind of slow down. What kind of feeling and emotion am I going through right now, you know? that we, I'm not doing something I ought not do, you know. So, uh, and the reason why I'm saying that, because here in, uh, what is it, uh, in, in John, yeah, in John uh, chapter 16, verse 32 and 33, Jesus has told the disciples this. He said, Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that you shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone, and yet I'm not alone, because the Father is with me. Now these things I have spoken to you, that in me you might have peace. And in the world you shall have tribulations, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So, so Jesus is saying we're going to go through tribulations, you know. And so, I, you know, I, I wanted to, to find the definition of tri tribulation, so I looked it up too, you know. And uh, tribulation right here, it says that tribulation is a cause of great trouble or suffering. Uh, it says that it's a state of great trouble or suffering. Uh, his time of tribulation was just beginning. It says similar things are like trouble, worry, anxiety, burden, cross to bear, affliction, ordeals, you know, and it goes on and on, you know. So we kind of understand, you know, that, you know, God didn't promise no better roses to us. He told us that we go through tribulations. And sometimes we need to get into, we'll get into those, and then maybe our emotions, our feelings get wrapped up into it too. And we need to be real careful that we don't make bad choices or something, you know, things that we wish we wouldn't have done later, you know. So anyways, uh, I wanted to share some things about, about the Word of God here. Where, uh, this is where Jesus was in the wilderness, okay? And uh, he, he had, he had, it says right here in uh, uh, John, Matthew 4, 4, chapter 4. I'm going to read start at verse 2, though. And it says that here, And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hunger. And it just seems odd to me, you know, and then the devil shows up. It's 40 days before he's hungry and everything. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. You know. But he answers and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now that's amazing to me because, see, how many of us actually feed on the Word of God? That's, you know, actually take it and live off of it, you know. And these stones that, that Satan was talking about here, I mean, a lot of us, you know, we just picture regular stones laying on the ground and that. But you know what? The Ten Commandments are wrote on stone, you know. Do we live by the Ten Commandments? No, we don't. We live way beyond the Ten Commandments, okay? God wants to put his, his spirit in us, and he's our God, and he guides and directs and teaches us all of his words, how we should live, you know, so that we can 
fight against the wiles of the devil, you know. So we see here where Jesus said it's written. And then when you go through all those scriptures there where Jesus is being tempted, he always responds with, it is written, it is written, it is written. Okay. So uh, when we uh, look at that, we can uh, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and uh, verse 4 and 5. And we'll see right here that uh, in Second Corinthians, you know, I think as Paul wrote this book, wrote to the Corinthians, it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So a lot of people, man, they start thinking and their, and their, their imaginations and thoughts, they go off over here and, well, well, this is okay and it's okay because I think if you do that, and God will accept this. And But is it written? Is it really written? Did God say that or is that just your imagination and thought? We need to know God. We need to read the word, you know. We need to feed on it, you know. If we're really born again Christians, this should be our number one thing that we live by. We live by the word of God. Does that mean we're perfect? No, 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 no. We got sin natures and everything in us. But you know what? We have been forgiven past, present, and future. When Jesus said on that cross, it was finished. They say that in the Greek or the Hebrew, it was in perfect tense, which meant it, we are perfect. Forgiven, past, present, and future. But he also said that broad and wide is the path to destruction, you know. And, and if you want to take that path, then you can you can go and man, you might you might end your life way shorter than God intended for you. Who knows, you know. You might bring on stuff, you know, that you didn't want to to bring on, you know. So we need to understand that we cast down every imagination and thought that exalts it. This is where feelings and emotion get mixed in. We start thinking, well, I feel this way, but you know what? The word says this. And God says, you know, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, and thy mind, and thy strength. And the very first word in the Ten Commandments is, I am, I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. We need to understand these things, you know, and live by them. And again, I'm telling you, we all fall short. So look, at, I'm not trying to be self-righteous here. I'm just trying to tell truth here, you know. And if anybody's feelings get hurt or if they get offended from what I'm saying, dude, you're not offending me. You're offending God. You're talking to God right there, man. It's not me talking to you. I'm just sharing what the Word of God says, you know. So anyways, uh, I'm going to go down here and I want to read this one. Uh, down here, uh, I'm going to close with this one right here, okay? So this is my conclusion of things for everybody out there. You know, we've got elections coming up and everything too, you know. And we need to know what, what the Word of God might would say, who are best candidates we should choose in that, you know. Not because mom and dad's been this or that all. You know, we need to become men and women and learn, you know, and say, you know, would what would be the best for us? as a country. We need to make that decision. Because I believe this is a very, very important election that's coming up this year. And I'm not trying to get political with you. You make your own choice, you know, and may God be with you when you do make that choice. And, but this is what I want to close with right here, is that the choices we make today, today determine our destination for tomorrow. So be careful with what you choose, okay? I love you guys. May God bless, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.